bless you, God. God, we come to declare you have set your glory high above the heavens. God, we give you honor and we say how excellent is your name. Hey! Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name, God. How many of you know we serve an excellent God? How many of you know we serve an excellent God? He's worthy. He is worthy. Hey, glory, glory. Come on, put your hands together with us. Hey, glory, glory. Come on, so how does that say, oh Lord?
Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're watching us through Facebook Live, we want to welcome you today. Hallelujah. And we want to encourage you to make his name great. So right where you are, open up your mouth and begin to magnify the Lord. Just begin to bless him. Hallelujah. Bring the presence of God into your atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verses 1 through 2 and 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Father, we come to you now in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we are thanking you for this day, God. Hallelujah. We want you to show up and show out, God. We want you to have your way, God, in this service through our lives. God, move mightily, God. Receive our worship through song and dance as a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils, God. Cause us to come higher in you, God. Higher in your presence. Higher in your glory. We want the residue of heaven to fill this place, God. We're believing and trusting you for a mighty move. Now, bless the word that's going to come forth. Let it be powerful. Powerful God, let it be anointed, God. Let it be encouraging and let it fulfill what it is designed to do, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We give you glory for the move that's about to happen. We're in anticipation. We're in expectation, God, for you to shift the house like never before. So, God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Somebody give him glory. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, come on, bless him, bless him. How excellent is your name, God. Oh, who has felt your glory high above the heavens? We give you honor. How excellent is your name. You have felt your glory. Come on, somebody bless him right there. Come on, somebody bless him right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Come on, Sopranos, help me say, He's wonderful.
Oh, come on, give your God an excellent praise. I need somebody in this place to open up your mouth and give God an excellent praise. Oh! Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on. If God has been good to you like I know he has, let your praise match his blessings. Let your praise match the blessing. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. for you to open up your mouth and bless God. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to bless him. When I walked into the house, I was thankful. I was ready to worship him. You don't need me to tell you when. You don't need me to tell you how. He's been just that good that it becomes automatic to lift my hands to bless him. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. But just in case, if you would, just lift your hands. And just open up your mouth and let God hear your voice. How thankful you are. How grateful you are to him. Come on, make this moment intimate between you and God. You know what he's brought you throughout this week. You know what he's done for you. Anybody grateful? Anybody thankful? Just lift your hands and wave to him. Come on, get his attention. Join in with the angels this morning as they cry, holy, holy, holy. Open up your mouth and give God your worship. Come on, David said in his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Anybody got to have a continuous praise? <laughs> You should. He's been blessing you continuously <laughs> every time you wake up. Shout your name 
Let it be known You are the King of kings Prince of peace May your kingdom reign Never cease Everybody say Lion of Judah High on the throne I shout your name Let it be known You are the King Never cease, never cease. 
that's a good place for you to lift your hands. That's a good place for you to open your mouth and proclaim his goodness to you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Moses went to go tell Pharaoh he was instructed by God to tell Pharaoh to let the people go. Moses said, who shall I say sent me? God said, tell him I am that I am. So when God said I am, <laughs> our response is you are. God said, I am your peace. You simply say, You are, you are, you are. God said, I'm your joy. You simply say, You are, you are, you are. He said, I am that I am. You simply say, You are. Oh, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, yeah. I'm your love. You are, you are, you are, you are. I'm your way maker, your provider. You say, you are, you are. You are. Uh, God said, I am your healer. Uh, I am your savior. You say, You are, you are, you are. Oh, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are. I wonder if I could get just about a few of you just to stand with your hands lifted towards heaven look up to heaven and just tell God something God you are I love you Jesus oh hallelujah God yeah. That's why we say, Lion of Judah, I on the throne, oh, I shall your name, let it be, you are, you are the King of me. While you put your hands together, can you open up your mouth? Because God is so much better than just a hand clap. God has been so much better than just that hand clap. I'm trying to help somebody. <laughs> if you respond correctly, God will move on your behalf. He's so much better than that hand clap. If you would just open up your mouth, if you really need God to move. Oh! Come on, come on, continue to worship. Hallelujah. If you need a breakthrough, continue to worship. Hallelujah. If you need deliverance, continue to worship. Hallelujah. If you need a shift in your life, continue to worship. 
Hallelujah, he's waiting to make a move. Continue to worship. Open up your mouth. Come on and give him glory. Come on, continue to worship. Let him hear the fruit of your lips. Come on, give him glory. Continue to worship. Hallelujah. Don't let nothing on the left or right of you distract you. Continue to worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up. Come on, open up your mouth. Continue to worship. Hallelujah. Shift into another atmosphere. Hallelujah. Let your praise take you into another stratosphere. Hallelujah. With your worship, you go higher. Above your problems, above your proclivities, above your pain, above your issues. Go higher, higher, higher. Come on, lift up your voice, oh ye gates. Come on, magnify him. Give him glory. Open up your mouth and bless him bless him bless him bless him you might be troubled you might be struggling hallelujah but this is the opportunity for you to open up your mouth and give god his best give god your best hallelujah begin to declare that he is good begin to declare that he is worthy begin to declare that he is wonderful hallelujah hallelujah remembering psalms it reminds us to give up a shout unto God with the voice of triumph. So hallelujah. I'm shouting even though the victory is not present. But I'm making a declaration in this moment that I am victorious. No matter what I'm facing or what I'm dealing with. I'm declaring victory over my life. So I'm going to shout unto God. I'm going to shout and give him glory. I'm not going to hold it back. You ought to lift him up. Hallelujah. The 22nd Psalms. I believe it's the third verse. It tells us. Hallelujah. That he inhabits the praises of his people so if you got a dilemma if you got an issue and you need the presence of God you ought to begin to praise him you ought to begin to bless him hallelujah come on come on somebody push and press in hallelujah you've been dealing with some stuff and things for a mighty long time but this is your season of breakthrough this is your time of deliverance if you want it you better open up your mouth and give God glory hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He is the great I am. He is the mighty God. Hallelujah. His name is Elohim, the mighty creator. His name is El Shaddai, the big busted one. He's a God of more than enough. Hallelujah. His name is Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner raised in victory. Hallelujah. His name is Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody bless his name. Somebody lift him up. Somebody give him glory. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. He He's worthy, 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 worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. I dare you to shift the atmosphere in your life with the presence of God. If you desire a breakthrough, give him glory. Hallelujah. If you need deliverance, give him glory. If you need healing, give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together and with a resounding shout, cry out the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 my healer, my deliverer, my way maker, my provider, my strength, my joy, my help, my hope, the lover of my soul and the lifter of my head. His name is Jesus. He is the lily in the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a wonder worker. He's a miracle worker. Hallelujah. He is the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Come on, lift him up. He's good. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give God a great praise. Hallelujah. Don't play with it. He's the King of Kings. Glorify him. He's the Lord of Lords. Magnify him. He's everything. Hallelujah. Real quick. 1230. We'll be passing out the baskets. This is a first come, first serve. 
Hallelujah. 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 Tonight at 630, we're coming together for prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. For We're believing for a breakthrough, a move of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's good to see Pastor back in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's still recovering. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Bishop will be here on next Sunday. Hallelujah. Bring you forth a word. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We pray for their safe travels. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, uh. Ah, oh, amen. Hallelujah. I got to keep going. I don't know. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Wish I'd have told me that before I slowed down. Hallelujah. I, I just did him. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So listen, tonight come out. We're believing for a move of God. Amen. We are going to worship and pray. Hallelujah. We're praying for deliverance. We're just believing. This is, God said to me that this will be a season of acceleration. And then he just said to me uh, that there's a dimensional shift that's about to take place. So in the season of acceleration with a dy dimensional shift, amen, that means you're going to go from one season into the next season. But it's not going to look like you went through the season. Somebody help me. Wow. Yes, yes, sir. You're going to go from one season to the next season, but with the dimensional shift, you're not going to look like you went through a season. You're just going to be at your next Wow. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Man, if that ain't nothing to shout on, I almost lost it. I was in the corner about to run through the wall. You mean to tell me that you're going to move me from where I am right now to the next? And it ain't going to look like I went through the season? If we did aim, it's all over again in the message Bible. It talks about the message uh, 9 and 13, 9 through 13. Hallelujah. In the Amos, it talked about how it was gonna happen faster than you can expect. You wouldn't even be your, your head was gonna swim, it was gonna happen so fast. You're not gonna even realize that you done jumped from one thing to the next thing. You're about to be overtaken with blessings and breakthroughs and deliverance. You're about to be overtaken with the favor of God over your life. But you have a responsibility to play. That's your worship. That's your obedience. That's your submission to what God wants. And when we walk in that vein, hallelujah, then one moment, you're going to be bent over sowing seed. And next thing you're going to look up, you're going to be overtaken with a blessing. As I'm bending up, as I'm putting down, I'm plucking up. As I'm putting down, I'm plucking up. Next thing you know, I'm going to be from one season to the next season. Hallelujah. The glory of God is going to look good on you. People are not going to be able to know. They're not going to know what happened. And you're not going to be able to articulate it. All you're going to be able to say, it was God. I don't know how I went from being broke to being prosperous it was God I don't know how I went from being sick yesterday to being completely healed the next day it was God I don't know how I went from making minimum wage to making a great salary it was God I don't know how my credit score wouldn't allow me to buy the house but I got the house anyway it was God He's shifting us in that bitch, Elder. Now I'm going to get out the way so his boy can sing. Go ahead, country boy. Come on, worship him right there. Hallelujah. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise.
right there. Come on, worship the Lord right there. Come on and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We need a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a prayer of praise. Uh, he's so much better than just that hand clap. Can you open up your mouth while you're putting your hands together and give God a praise? Uh, if I could be honest with you even right now, I need your praise. Right now, I need your praise. To shift the atmosphere the devil is a liar the devil is a liar the devil is a liar there is peace in this house there is peace in this house there is order in this house before I start I want to openly apologize to my pastor um, just apologize he knows why but I don't have a problem spiritually understanding that when things are done in order God will release yet instill his presence and his blessings upon the house so before I bring this word to you, I want to openly apologize to my pastor. I dropped the ball. There's no excuse. And God is still going to receive the glory and the honor. I am free. There is therefore no condemnation. I, there's no guilt. There's no shame. I need somebody to understand there's no guilt and there's no shame look at somebody and say live and be free I understand that when you do the things that are in order in the house by God you are no longer bound but you are free so I stand before you my pastor, Pastor Ken Moss and Lady Moss, the pastors of this house, the shepherd and the shepherdess of this house standing before you, I apologize for dropping the ball and not doing the things that should have been done. There is no excuse, but before this word go any further and before the enemy tries to come in and put his whole body in here, <laughs> I'm going to cut the head off right now so he can't live. You will hear the word as it is intended for you to hear it. You will live and be free. Amen. Now, I need you to really put your hands together, open up your mouth, and shift this atmosphere with your praise. I need you to open up your mouth, put your hands together, and give God your best praise for what you know he's already done and what he's about to do. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Uh, uh, I hope that we as elders 
and leaders can be great examples of how to be humble and submitted to authority. This is not even on my paper, but I am moved by God to help you understand though I'm over, I'm still under. I need you to understand though I'm elder over some things I'm still under the authority of someone who's over me so I need you to understand that amen 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 well let's move into the word first giving honor to God who truly is the head of my life I honor him and I bless him for the great things he has done because I can remember when it only takes a memory just to think about what God has done so God we honor you and I bless you oh God come on pray with me father God we pray right now that your spirit would just rest in this place God be with us as we listen attentively to you that they will see none of me but all of you oh God cause the cross to be seen mm. cause us to remember what you have done for us that we will become even more grateful and thankful to you God I pray now that there is no lack to everyone here oh God God, I pray for the first family of this house that there is no lack. There is complete and fullness because you are a complete and full God. Thank you, O oh Father. Thank you, God, for yet this chance, another opportunity to bless you and your people, O oh God. So God, be pleased with what you hear. Be pleased with what you see. Be pleased with what we do. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Every heart said amen. Now one more time, put your hands together. <laughs> Y'all excuse me, I had double duty today. <laughs> well, hopefully we can get out of here in time and just want to encourage you all today with this word in first Kings chapter 17 we're going to start at verse 8 it says then the word of the Lord came to him saying arise go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon and dwell there See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And she was going to ask, and as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die and Elijah said to her do not fear go and do as you have said but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me and afterward make some for yourself and your son for thus said the Lord of Israel the bin of flour shall not be used up nor the jar of oil run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth understand there was a famine in the land there was no moisture they couldn't grow anything there was nothing there so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah and she said and he 
And she, I'm sorry, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord that was spoken by Elijah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, one of my life scriptures says, For this light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And the people of God said, For a subject I would just like to use and look at somebody and say, Hold on. It's almost over. Look at somebody and say, hold on. It's almost over. Now one more time, put your pretend preacher voice on and look at somebody and say, hold on. It's almost over. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. It seems like everywhere we look, there is something going on negatively throughout the world and even in our community. We turn on the news, we read in the newspaper or other forms of media that someone has been killed, robbed, or unjustly accused, let alone us having to deal with the ongoing ups and downs and information concerning the flu virus that they've called COVID. <laughs> It has gripped people's minds and emotions and has raised so many uncertainties about our future, our nation of communities and our own lives. These events and so many more have taken toll on our natural and spiritual man. Have you ever found yourself in a situation that has caused you to ask, when will this be over? I need y'all to talk to me. Or even that question, how much longer is this going to be like this? Have you ever made the statement, I just don't know how much more of this I can take? Or how about this? If something doesn't happen or change soon, I think I'm going to lose my mind. Statements like these and many others have been said or even thought not just by you, but by the person sitting to your left or to your right. We have had to encourage ourselves in the Lord, dealing with the past mentioned situations on top of the additional vicissitudes of our lives, our jobs, bills, the price increase of everything except our paychecks, and dealing with our families and friends. Some have simply turned to what they felt would help them deal with these conditions by smoking or drinking a little something that would give them only a temporary relief to a condition that would still be there. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or say anything, but if that's you, just put your head down and say, God help me. Oh yes, I've been there. So today, my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you like I've been encouraged because when you look back over your life and begin to count your blessings and the ways you know only God has made for you and has brought you over, out, under, and through, I have to give testimony that he did it before, he will do it again. I need somebody to understand and come with me. He did it before. He will do it again. Yeah. Uh, truth be told, some of us have repeated and rehearsed that same sob story and excuses as to why things aren't going to get better or look like nothing will change. Well, let me speak to that negative spirit that's trying to make you forget the God you serve. I come to serve notice on the devil and his imps that my condition, that your condition is not your conclusion. It may look like I'm struggling. It may look like I'm losing to you. It may look like I'm not going to make it to you. It may look like he got me backed up in a corner. But I read in his word, God cares for me. God knows me. God sees me. God has not forgotten about me. God has not forgotten about you. Hold on, it's almost over. We have the word 
of God to remind us that we are the head and not the tail. I will remember the word of God that tells me in Psalms 24 and 7, another one of my life scriptures. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory now think about that hold on it's almost over it's almost over things will change when you make way for the god to come into your situation Things will look much different and feel different when you open up your mouth and let your praise ring louder than your problems. Y'all didn't catch that. Things will be different when you open up your mouth and let your praise become louder than your problems. So you got to know how to respond to get the right results. Things will change when you think of the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of God who is strong and mighty. Someone should shout and encourage yourself. Hold on, it's almost over. Yes, we serve a God who can and will change your situation. Yes, we serve a strong and mighty God that will show up and do it for you. Yes, we serve a God that's full and complete. Yes, we serve a God that is ready to come into your situation and give you the expected end. Yes, we serve that king of glory. Somebody shout, I serve that king of glory. This is not going to be how this ends for me. If I can just hold on just a little while longer. 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 There will be new mercy. There will be new grace given. There will be a new look about you. There will be blessings and miracles given to you if you just hold on. Sometimes how am I feeling? Does it feel like it's almost over? It feels like it's just beginning. But I wonder if there's anyone here that's anticipating and expecting whatever it is to be over soon. If there's anybody here that's anticipating and expecting this thing to be over soon, for about 30 seconds, I want you to go ahead and give God praise because you know it's about to be over soon. You holding on because you know it's about to be over. Come on, for about 30 seconds, give them your best. Come on, give them a praise because you know by faith it's about to be over. Come on, let your praise match your belief. It's about to be over. If we could just take a flashback of our lives, we would truly realize that this little hurdle, this little bump in the road, this little hiccup is nothing compared to what I'm about to come out looking like. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of arrogant right now. 
I know you think you know what's going on with me. I know you hurt. I'm, I'm not saying me personally, but you know, some people, they like to spread stuff around and you know, so I have to let people know. I know what you heard. I know what they said. I know what they're doing. I done caught it all, but see, you don't understand. It's just a little affliction, but for a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that old saying? Six and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So we don't have time to try to keep up with other people. Truth be told, right now, I'm in a situation that requires me to give attention to this word that will help me get out of this headspace I'm in right now. You don't know what it took for me to get I'm just saying this for somebody here You don't know what it took for me to get here this morning I need to hear something before I do something Don't push me Because I'm close to the edge I'm trying not to lose my Ah Woo There comes a time when we need to call on someone Who we can connect to with your faith to their faith when I was growing up there was a cartoon that I had to watch every Saturday morning some of y'all may may remember this I'm telling my age but I don't care it was called the Justice League <laughs> one of my favorite superheroes duo in the Justice League were the Wonder Twins <laughs> and when they connected their fists together they would shout out Wonder Twin power activate <laughs> and the sister would call out what she wanted and the brother would call out what he wanted to be so both, both now having the power to accomplish together the obstacle in front of them well what are you saying preacher well what I found out in this walk of Christendom we need spiritual wonder twins we need someone that we can connect with some that, someone we can bump fists with that when we get that explosion of power that we will be able to call out what we need to defeat to defeat and conquer the obstacle in front of us so I just wonder if you don't mind a fist bump somebody and say spiritual twin power activate form of my peace form of my strength form of my joy form of my increase form of my love form of my breakthrough spiritual wonder twin power activate hold on it's almost over Woo. Some of y'all looked at me like I was crazy right there. You don't want to fist bump nobody. But as soon as you get in a situation, you're going to wish you did. Spiritual wonder twin power activate. Brother Levi, Deacon Levi, come here. Spiritual wonder twin power activate. Elder Alonzo, come here. Spiritual wonder twin power, activate. Yes, sir. I need somebody just to stand up, go to somebody and say, spiritual wonder twin power, activate and call out what you need. Call out what you need. Spiritual wonder twin power, activate. Form of my breakthrough. Form of my, faith, my financial healing. Form of my healing. Form of my strength. Form of my love. Spiritual wonder twin power, activate. Woo! Now, if you activated some power, I dare you to give God a praise for the power that was just activated. Hold on. It's almost over. Y'all gonna go home fist bumping dog spiritual wonder twin power <laughs> fist bumping your pets <laughs> fist bumping your refrigerator fist bumping your, your old car because you're going to get a new car fist bumping yeah uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to somebody didn't catch that uh huh here in the scriptures in first kings 
We read the story of a woman who is living in a situation of what seems to be a hard time. Sounds familiar. She was asked to do something for someone else in a time where she already made up her mind that this was over and she made peace with it. She had already decided her and her son's outcome based on her current situation and the little resources she had. She has no husband. Scripture gave no way to, for us to think that she did. And the text doesn't give an indication of her having any other relatives that could help her. The scripture doesn't even give information about her son until after the miracle was performed that he was sorely sick. Can you see yourself in this woman's situation with a few exceptions? You may have more resources than she has in your house by way of food and money. You may have more family and relatives that you can go to for help. There may be, even be a husband or a boo in your house that is working or should be working to help you make sure that you don't experience a drought of resources of any kind. Can you see yourself somewhere in this woman's position? Can you see yourself sometimes being in a place where it looks like it's dry and barren? There is nothing living nothing nutritional for you to eat this woman has decided for her and her son i'm gonna take this little bit that i have go get these sticks make a fire we're gonna eat and die she already decided that this was going to be our last supper Sometimes in moments like that in our lives, we panic and we don't think. We don't think clearly. She panicked and the only thing she thought about was dying. Because she looked at her situation. She looked at her condition and said this is it how many of us have been there how many of us have looked in our wallet or our bank account and said well this is it but when you look back over your life in the same situation you can open up your mouth and testify. He did it before and he'll do it again. Look at somebody, high five him, say, he did it before, he'll do it again. Yeah, I've been in that situation. I looked at my bank account. I looked at my wallet. I looked at my refrigerator. I looked at my cupboard. It looked barren, but look at me. I made it. I'm still here. He did it before, he'll do it Hold on, it's almost over. As we read, this woman was asked to give drink and feed someone she didn't even know. Can you imagine sitting at home and you have come to grips that this is the end, it's over, you're gonna eat, the little you have so that you can wait to die. And there's a knock on your door asking you to share what you have to help sustain that person that you don't know. In this text, I see something that I think God really wants us to pay attention to. There is a continued blessing 
in obedience. There is a continued blessing in obedience. Although it looks to be barren and scarce, the woman had already believed that this was a man of God and was simply obedient in the first request for water. However, when Elijah called out to, for, to her to bring something to eat, it took a whole other feeling, almost as if, as if she was saying, I promise you, if I thought I had enough to do for you, myself and my son, I would, but I don't. But then it was like she responded like Jesus did in the garden. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Sometimes we have to look at situations that doesn't require or call for a carnal or fleshly response, but a spiritual and sound response to get the result we seek. The response should be thank you, yes, hallelujah, and amen. One of these responses are bound to change your outcome and your outlook on your condition. We have to make sure that we don't contradict what we know God has told someone to ask of us to do by looking at our present circumstance. Say that again. We have to make sure that we don't contradict what we know God has told someone else to ask us for, to do for them by looking at our present circumstance. It isn't, isn't that just like God to send someone to speak life into what seems to be a dead situation? This woman was simply ready to give up. Can you imagine someone really who you don't know what you're going to do when they walk up to you and ask you for something and the only thing you can look at is your resources and your condition. Can you imagine someone really not knowing what you're going through but walk up to you and make a declaration of abundance when things look scarce makes a decree of strong faith into a moment of deep fear and ready to quit it's the words that God's promise it's in those times that God's promises are being created but for the moment they're hidden from view the promises after the obedience is the testimony that God will sustain you until what you really need will arrive. The woman, there was a drought in the land. There was no rain. There was no moisture. There was no, no anything to help grow, to help nurture anything or anybody. But there was a promise that Elijah made to the woman when he said, if you give me this, this will not run dry until the day the Lord sends the rain. There is a continued blessing in obedience. So here it is. The promises after the obedience is a testimony of God will sustain you until what you need will arrive. Here it is, the rain that the land needed. So I just wonder if there's about five of you that you can hear this word and even in your barren situation that God is about to honor his word when Paul said, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in 
us. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. I have an exceeding abundant promise coming my way. It doesn't matter what you think you know about me or what I don't deserve. I have an exceeding abundant promise coming my way. It doesn't matter what the condition may look like. You have an exceeding abundantly promise coming your way. If you just keep moving, if you just keep pushing, if you just stay the course, you will receive what you've been waiting for. Somebody say, hold on, it's almost over. What's almost over, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. Your struggle is almost over. Your worry is almost over. Your lack is almost over. Your valley of dryness is almost over. Go ahead and shed the tears, but let me encourage you or remind you, weeping may endure for a night, but preach with me, comes in the say good morning. Woo! It's almost over. Why almost? I'm, th- I'm glad you asked. Y'all asking a lot of questions while I'm preaching. Thank you. Why almost, preacher? I want it to be over now. You know, we, we, you know, you know, when things come, happen to us, we want it to be over with now. I mean, right now. Not just now, but right now. Listen here, God. I know you see me. I believe, but help my unbelief. I don't need you now. I need you. Preach with me. God, I know you see my bank account when I looked at it. And veteran, well, whoever these people are now, they talking about raising stuff and my paycheck hasn't increased for this raise that they're doing. So I don't need you to move now. I need you to move. God, listen, now, now, now things are going up. Chitlins done became $20 for a bucket. Uh, turkeys done became about $50 for a 20 pound. Uh, 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 chicken done increased to, to too much. Uh, stuff is increasing, God, and my paycheck still is the same. So, God, I don't need you to move now. I need you to move. Why almost, preacher? Y'all keep asking these questions. Okay, so I'm going to tell you. So, 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 well, because God in all his wisdom remembers when you got all that you wanted that first time what you did with it so this time to make sure you stay your course and you remember him you have to suffer a little while a little while I believe God is training us to be a reflection of his glory through hardship Truth be told, if we get it right now, we may fumble that ball. It's out in the open, bouncing around for somebody else to pick it up and run with it, and you no longer have what you had in possession the first time. We have to understand and remember the teacher is silent during the test. You have to understand that God cares for you. There are just certain things that God has to allow to happen for you in and through your life to bring you back to him. Paul asked God three times to remove this storm from him. It's believed that Paul suffered from some physical ailments some psychological and or some spiritual ailments as well. That sounds like some of the things that I'm sure some of us have suffered throughout this life. Some mental ailments. I don't know about you, but there have been times that I'm like, listen here. Listen here, God. If you don't do something, I am. 
and I don't know which way it's going to end up. All I know, and I'm being truthful, all I know is that something has to come to an end. It's amazing. I think about how many times I've looked at my condition and came to my own conclusion. And I'm still saved. And I, you still trust and believe God. But it's something about when that thing is in front of your face and it seems bigger than your own faith and your own belief that you start to say stuff that don't even make sense and is not even spiritual according to the, who you say you serve. I mean, let's be truthful. How many of us looked at the bill and looked at that thing and looked at that thing and looked at that thing and decided well yes they're going to cut it off opened up right refrigerator and said huh well yes I won't eat today what happened to you remembering that God did it before and the faith statement that he'll do it again? So here, Paul has made the statement, God, take this away from me. Take this away from me. God's response to Paul was, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. I just wonder if there's about five people here that can give God an outrageous praise because you experience God's sufficient grace upon your life. That you experienced his strength in your weakness. Oh, don't do it because I asked you to. Do it because when you think about what he did for you and how he's brought you through, how he's brought you over, he did that thing for you. His grace was sufficient for you. Strength in your weakness. Casting. There is a point in time of our lives. And I'm almost done. There's a point in time in our lives that the hardships are working for our good and we can't give up. There's a point in time in our lives where we have to suffer just for a little while because it's working for my good. And we know all things that work together for good. For good, not my good, for good. Because when God does something, it's for good. Because you got to understand, God has no respect of a person. So you can't put in my, because that's not even what the word says. He said, for we know that all things work together for good. I know the thoughts that I think for you, they are of good. So here it is. We have to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. It's what helps us manifest and see that God is moving us from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Can you just testify and encourage somebody, look at them and say, God cares for you. 
Look at somebody else and say, God cares for you. Point to somebody across the aisle and say, God cares for you. Now put your real preacher voice on and say, God cares for you. Remember in 1 Peter 5 and 7, in the Amplified Version, it says, where we're reminded of these words. Casting all your cares all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Look at somebody and say, God cares for me. In the message, it reads like this. So be content with who you are and don't put on airs. Meaning, be content right now with where you are and don't fake the funk. Be content with what God has already blessed you with because more is coming. But don't make it look like you got more than what you don't. I laugh at some of these brothers out here where it looks like your car probably costs more than the house you're living in. I need some understanding. You faking the funk. Do we still say that? Am I old? Okay. What they say, stunting? Is that old too? That's old too? Oh, I'm real old. I'm late. Okay, I'll fleece it. Is that old too? Oh, wow. I'm done then. I, I don't know nothing else. So y'all can tell I wasn't brought up, I wasn't brought up in the streets. Y'all can already tell. Y'all can already. <laughs> but here it is. He said, don't put on airs. God's strong hand is on you. Isn't it good to know that there's a strong hand on you? He'll promote you at the right time. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. So remember this as you go throughout this weekend, whatever or whenever something comes up that may at first look like it's a problem or it may be a wrinkle in your day. Remember, for this light affliction is but for a moment. For this light affliction is but for a moment. Can you put that scripture up for me in 2 Corinthians 17, I believe it is. For this light affliction is but 4 and 17, 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. I need y'all to help me read this. Y'all read it, let's read it together. One, two, three. For our light David simply said, he restores my soul. Hold on, it's almost over. He restores my soul. For this light affliction, which is but for a moment. Can anybody just look at what you see right now that's going on in your life and just say, it's just a light affliction, but it's working for me. I need somebody to put your hands together and say, this light affliction is but for a moment, but it's working for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't have much, but it's working for me. <laughs> I see the bills, but guess what? It's working for me. I don't have much money, but it's just a light affliction, and it's working for me. I don't have everything I need. I don't have everything I want, but God said, the Lord is my shepherd. I share not one and that he will supply my need for this light affliction it's but for a moment hold on it's almost over I am more than a conqueror through him that loves me hold on it's almost over it's almost over I need you to put your hands together open up your mouth and declare to yourself it's almost over now give God praise. <laughs> Whew. 
for this light affliction is but which is but for a moment work is that's a wonderful promise where it's working for you but David said he restores my soul he restores my soul so here it is hold on it's almost over hold on it's almost over. I know you tired of crying. I know you tired of dealing with it. I know it don't look right. I know it doesn't feel right, but hold on. It's almost over. December 31st is right around the corner. And I want to take the time to declare and decree everything that you have been through through this year that was not of God or may have been of God is working for your glory. It's working for your good even right now. Because come December 31st at 1159 and when the clock strikes midnight, it's a new year. Elder Baxter already declared you're not going to look like the, the old season, but you're just going to walk into your new one. No one's going to know what you've been through no one's going to be able to tell that you've been through the fire and look at you and say you don't smell like anything so I just want to declare you just need to hold on it's almost over I know you cried over your kids I know you cried over yourself I know you cried because it didn't look right I know you cried because it seemed like it wasn't enough but hold on it's almost over if you would just stand to your feet and just lift your hands. Just lift your hands to him and receive the presence of the Lord that's in this place even right now. Just close your eyes and think about that situation that has kept you up overnight. That has made you cry. Come on, stretch out your hands to him like a baby needing his mother or his father. God, help us today. We need you. God, we were ready to give up. Yes, God, we're going to be honest right now. We were ready to throw in the towel. Yes, God, we were ready to quit. Yes, God, we moved out of panic. We did something we should not have done. We said something we should not have said. God, forgive us. God, we believe, but help our unbelief. We cry out to you, oh God. We have our hands lifted to you, oh God, as an act of surrenderance to you. But God, we stand empty before a full and complete God. We stand empty before a full and complete God because God, right now, we have decided to trust you even the more. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God, no more shall we move out of panic. No more shall we move out of looking at our condition and thinking it is, is our conclusion, God. But God, we stand in agreement right now that we're going to hold on because we know it's almost over. It's almost over. I dare somebody open your mouth and just say it's almost over. Just keep telling yourself it's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. We're almost there. It's almost over. This year shall be no more. It's almost over. Now give God your best praise for, for what you heard for today. Ah. 
That was for the Father. Now give God a praise for the Son. Now you go ahead and give him praise for the Holy Ghost. Ah. Can you praise God for your neighbor next to you? I mean, can you really praise God for the person sitting next to you? Because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they've been through. Ah. Ah. Amen. Well, pray that this word has spoken to you and has encouraged you. God has a way of just bringing things into order. I thank God for order. I thank God for submission. I thank God for being able to forgive. I thank God because y'all know sometimes it's hard to forgive when we think. And I thank God for the heart of humbleness to be able to apologize publicly. And I don't say that lightly because I need God, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, but I need God to do some things in my life. And if I don't acknowledge the wrong that I've done, period, spiritually, ecclesiastically, I'm delaying what I know God has for me. If you don't, are not able to forgive, quickly apologize quickly you really can't expect God to move quickly for your life I've learned that I've learned that so when you hear God say do something it's for your good it's for your good it's for your good Again, the correct result, the correct response will get you the right result. If you respond correctly, you'll get the result that you desire. Amen? Amen. Well, so at this time, we're going to get our offering together. Amen? Amen. And before we go, if there's anyone here that is not saved, and you want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you would, just slip up your hand and we'll come and pray for you, with you. Amen. Looks to be we're all family. If there's anyone here who wants to make Potter's House your church home, you felt the Spirit of God move and you're compelled to become a part of this church family, lift up your hands and we'll make sure that we get the information to you. Amen. Amen. We all family. Well, put your hands together for, for the family being here. Amen. Amen. We praise God for our viewing audience. We praise God for our bishop, Bishop Mark McGuire and Lady Angela McGuire down in Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. We also thank God for our grandparents in the, in the spirit here at the Potter's House for Bishop and Lady um, Yvonne McLaughlin, Lady Norlene down at the Potter's House, Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. We love you. We thank God for you. We anticipate seeing you soon when we get off this nationwide sick and shut-in list. Um, so, <laughs> with COVID, amen. Amen, amen. Everybody have your gifts in your hand. Give me, give me a little music there. Everybody have your gifts in your hand. Lift it up to heaven. Father, we thank you for these gifts that are about to be given. God, we pray that this, these gifts, oh God, will be used for the uplifting of your kingdom, oh God. That we go out and feed and to clothe, oh God, and missions throughout the world, God. So God, today we thank you for what you have done, for what you have given, and God, for what we have heard. Be pleased, oh God. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.